Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and we're going to be going over the UFC card, the last UFC card for the year from a betting perspective. For those of you that have been watching these all year, hopefully you guys have learned something, not so much about how to analyze uh, the particular fights, but how to analyze MMA, how to analyze any betting market where there's a big that is somewhat dependent on public narrative and public perception and things like that. And um, we're going to finish off the year strong. And again, strong is, is again, it's a relative term. Actually, it's not a relative term. I think it's a very positive term in that we're just trying to learn something every single week about how to figure out what the public is on and how to train ourselves to be contrarian. Tr contrarian. I think these are very, very good life lessons and very good lessons on how to wager into markets such as this. It's a very good lesson into how to wager into markets such as the stock market. And uh, hopefully you guys uh, continue to tune in for these because it's quite enjoyable to uh, continue to flex my brain, I guess, to, to analyze these types of things. Because as I mentioned before, MMA is particularly suited to this type of analysis because the, the entire industry takes a full week, but after they get through analyzing these fights to death, they all settle, not all, but usually they settle on some very binary outcomes where either X wins by this method or Y wins by that method. And when it comes to a sport that's ripe with chaos, those types of results are, while they might be the most likely out outcomes, they're almost always completely overbet. So if you can figure out what that is and what the industry sentiment is and what the narratives are, then you can know that that component of the betting uh, market is 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 uh, is overvalued. And essentially, what you should be trying to do is is pick things that are undervalued, which is essentially everything else. Um, so what we're looking for are sides and methods of victory that are sort of underbet or underappreciated by the market that also obviously have some chance to win. So uh, let's go over the rules here. We have something like 12, 13 fights. You can't even keep track with all the additions or whatever. We're just going to go with what's on the board right now. We're not adding the Luque fight uh, with Holland. We don't even know if that's happening. It's one day before it's supposed to go up. Um, and here are the rules. We bet uh, one thing every single fight. And obviously that's not the best money management system in the world, but we don't care. Secondly, uh, we're going to be betting one unit on every single fight, which for us is $180, 10 times high. Good luck. Um, and again, that's not the greatest money management system in the world either, but we don't care. And, and thirdly, we uh, always presume that since we're being contrary, we're going to lose every single fight. And what we try to do is in the main event, just pet on something that's going to try to get us all our money back. So on a slight like this, it's going to be something that we uh, can get 12 to 1 on or higher. And again, you will see me actually put the bets in. I think transparency is important. Um, and again, whether we win, lose, or draw, hopefully it's the process of how we come to these bets, which is most important, which is why when people ask, who did I play? I'm not interested in telling them. They can go look at this video. And they can figure out how I got to the plays. But for me to give the, the plays without context is just, is just useless to the purpose of these videos. Anyway, uh, let's get started. Martin Budai against Shamil Gaziev. Um, and you know, what, what I'm hearing is that Gaziev is just, you know, while he might be a good wrestler, he's completely shy of any cardio that he completely gasses. And Martin Budai is someone who just can keep up a pace. He's proven he can at least go, um, 15 minutes. So the idea is that Budai, if he wins, it's probably going to be either late or by decision. And Gaziev is pretty much is his main path to victory is going to be first round. So if that's the common narrative, then those sides are probably going to be over bet. I, I've seen people play both sides of this as far as just who's going to win. So there's no real edge there. But I think that what we can do is either play something like Budai early or Gaziev by decision. So let's take a look and see what these odds are. You have Gaziev by decision is plus 50, 550, which is extremely strong. And let's take a look at Budai like round one, for example. Yeah, so round one by specifically by TKO is 650. That's not quite what I want um, because he could actually get a submission as well. So let's let's just go with the Gaziev by decision. Um, you know, everybody thinks that he doesn't have any cardio. So, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll fade that narrative and play him by decision plus 550 or 180. All right. 
Moving on, we have Andre Feely versus Lucas Almeida. Now, this one is something that you might see me you know, from time to time just bet blindly, and this is a perfect example. You have Andre Feely, who's minus 170, and you have Lucas Almeida is plus 140. So what you would expect to see uh, if this market were just not biased one way or the other is that if people were playing just, you know, who's going to win, they'd be picking about, you know, I would say about 60% of the people would be playing for Feely and 40% would be for Almeida. And if we were playing for who's going to, you know, win considering the odds, you expect it to be about even money, right? I mean, because that's, that's the way betting markets work, that half the people would pick on one side, half would pick the other, if it was in you know, a factor in the money line. So I've been watching this for a full week. I've seen not a single Lucas Almeida made a take. It's always, well, Philly's got the experience. I guess he's the side. Okay. I haven't heard a single Almeida take, even considering the plus 140. So that's who we're going to take. Lucas Almeida, plus 140. It's not like he's plus 500. That was nobody picking him. Anyway, Almeida plus 142 for 180. Tagir Ulan versus Cody Durden. Um, so this fight has been kind of analyzed to death here. So there's really not too much of an edge. So if I had to say if there was a fight where there, I haven't really heard too much of a public consensus, this would be it. So we're probably forcing a take here. But let's just, you know, review what the common theme is, is that, you know, these guys are both grapplers. Uh, they're both going to be going for takedowns. And the one thing I have heard is that while Durden has been able to get takedowns against non-wrestlers, he hasn't really fought an actual wrestler yet. So to be to gear is probably going to give him a lot of fits. So if anything, there's a little bit more on the side of Ulan Bekov. So we're just going ahead and take Durden. Uh, we're, we're not going to, now if I were really, sharp i would pick him to finish because that's the one thing that people are not allowing him for him they're saying that he's going to just hold the guy down but let's just let's actually take a look so we're probably going to play him for one plus 150 but let's just see just him inside the distance i mean what do we need I mean, we should probably figure out what we would need before we did it it's got to be at least plus 500 right let's just see what it is by tk or submission plus 550 I mean Boy, oh boy. He hasn't submitted anybody in like forever. Oh, that's brutal. That's like, that's so little chance to win that we're going to do it. Cody Durden plus 550. And we don't, you know, listen, the reason why we're doing TK or submission is I do think Cody Durden could win on the feet. So I think that he could actually get a knockout. So I'm not just going to play him by submission. So Durden by inside the distance plus 550 for 180. All right, uh, Casey O'Neill versus Arian Lipsky. I mean, I, I was starting to think that everybody was on the Casey O'Neill side, but I am hearing a lot during the course of the week this line is too wide. And that's what I'm getting in a lot of these uh, fights is that, well, I like O'Neill, but it's just too wide. So in those types of situations, I'm just going to probably be inclined to, I don't know, just believe the line sort of. So I'm not going to do anything as far as the money line goes, because I think people are playing both sides. But here's the one thing, is that as far as method of victory, they're saying that that O'Neal, if she wins, it's going to be because she gets her pace going and gets a you know a lot of volume and things like that. So I think as far as the upside goes, it's more on the O'Neal side. I don't think anybody is, is considering the possibility that Lipsky has some finishing upside of her, on her own. And I'll tell you this. If Casey O'Neill is going to go for all these takedowns, you know what's very possible? That there's a scramble and Lipsky can get a submission. So what we're going to do is we're going to get really nice and greedy and gamble, and we're going to play Lipsky by submission plus 1,400. Let's go. All right, so we have Cody Garbrandt versus Brian Kelleher. Um. All right. I, I originally was going to take Brian Kelleher here, but I've seen throughout the course of the week him getting a little more love. So there's really no side that you can really take. Um, so we're probably just going to just have to guess on something. I guess what I'm hearing the most of is that, you know, Garbrandt just took care of business in his last fight. But I've, had, I've also heard that 
that Cody Garbrandt's chin is an issue. So maybe Kelleher by KO is something that people are playing. So probably can't play that. So we should probably just do is play Garbrandt inside the distance because that's the that's the least likely thing based on current output. You know, he his last fight was very, very boring. And apparently all the upside as far as finishing goes to Kelleher. So let's just do that. We'll play Garbrandt by TKO or submission. Where is he? Plus 165. It sounds like a pretty thin line, but we're going to bet it anyway. That's a terrible bet. So bad, probably going to win. Irene Aldana versus Carol Hosa. So uh, this is could be, you know, the what they call the hipster play of the week. You have Carol Hosa, who is against Irene Aldana, who uh, Irene Aldana just put on a miserable performance in that five-round fight against Nunez. And all I've heard all week is how Aldana can be taken down by whoever wants to, and that Carol Hosa is going for her takedown. So Carol Hosa is definitely the big, you know, very popular favorite this week. So we're not, we're we're definitely not playing. Um, I think we're, the only question is how do you play Aldana? And I think that the majority of the people that are playing Aldana thinks that she can have some power and she can get that KO. So what we're going to actually do is play Aldana by decision here. I think this is the least likely, not least likely, but it's the least talked about method of victory in this whole shenanigans. So we're going to play her Aldana by decision. Plus 120. It's not a huge price, but I think uh, piece her up on the feet enough, avoid the takedowns, get the dub. All right. Uh, Alonzo Medifield versus just Dustin Jacoby. So this one is, okay, he, he, here is what we've we've determined about this fight, is that Alonzo Medifield definitely has power. And if he can catch Justin Jacoby early, he's got a chance to win. But Dustin Jacoby is much more technical. And Dustin Jacoby should probably just fight it all off and just win a nice clear cut decision. So anything with Menafield inside the distance, we're not playing. Um, and anything with Dustin Jacoby going to decision, we're not playing. The only thing we could play here is Jacoby inside or Menafield by decision. Let's take a look at some of these possibilities here. Um, Menafield by decision is a full plus 700. That is pretty freaking juicy, I have to say. I don't know how it's actually going to happen. Oh, actually, I know how it's going to happen. I mean, if he gets like a whole bunch of takedowns, you know, Menafield by decision plus 700. I mean, what, what else are we going to do? You want to play Jacoby inside the distance? Like Jacoby by KO is plus 140. What, what are we going to do about that? Can't play that. So let's do it. Let's play Menafield by decision plus 700. Kind of moron am I to do this? Well, we're gonna find out. All right. Um Josh Emmett versus Bryce Mitchell. So, you know, Josh Emmett fought Ilya Takoria and he, you know, he, he brought the heat, but he was just completely outclassed, it seems. And he got beat up pretty hard. Can't believe he's actually fighting again, <laughs> much less so soon. Yeah, Bryce Mitchell, who's you know, up and comer, he got dusted by uh, to Korea also, <coughs> we have a big, you know, we have a big uh, grappling disadvantage here. I mean, Emmett could get taken down. Bryce Mitchell could take him down. And I think everybody knows that. And yet still people are playing the Emmett by KO side. Um, they, they have, he has, still has this name value and people just still don't like Bryce Mitchell. So um, we can't play Emmett really. And, and we really can't play it. Certainly can't play Emmett by KO. I think people are into Bryce Mitchell just kind of taking him down and laying on him like he did in his last opponent. I don't think people are really playing the Mitchell inside the distance prop. So that's what we're going to do here. Um, Mitchell, and we're not going to play him just by submission because I think he could get a KO also. Let's just take a look. Uh, inside the distance, Mitchell plus 275. That's good enough for me. I know his last fight didn't really show that he could win that way, but I don't know. I, I just I just feel as though this is a good price that people are not really playing. Tony Ferguson versus Patty Pimblett. I mean, everybody hates Patty Pimblett. Um, uh, Jared Gordon, you know, may have won that fight against him. And Tony Ferguson, he's washed. 
we have this situation here where, you know, people are rooting for Tony Ferguson, but, you know, just their brains are telling them that Patty Pimlet's just going to, you know, to just take him down and submit him, you know, and that's pretty much it. So I can't really play, though, the Tony Ferguson side because he still has that name value. And unfortunately, I can't play the Pimblet by sub because people are playing that too much. So we're just going to have to bite the bullet here and play Pimblet by decision. Um, and it's a tough one to get to, but it's it's it makes some sense as far as the way the fight could go. Tony Ferguson is very tough. Um, and I think Pimblet really just want, needs uh, – he really wants this win over a big name here. So. I think he's going to get his takedowns. He's going to control him. And uh, I think this is good enough. I think too many people are on the other the other Pimblet methods of victory, and I think this makes some sense. All right. We have Shavkat Rachmanov versus Stephen Thompson. Yeah. I mean, again, the, the, the line seems wide, so people are saying. But, you know, in the end, uh, I think that uh, – People are set on the fact that Rachmanov eventually just kind of kind of gets to him. Um, they think that Thompson is fast mm -hmm. enough to stay out of trouble, maybe in the first round. But I don't know. You know, it's uh, if people really think that, maybe we should just play Rachmanov in the first round, just kind of be done with it. You know, the other thing about it is that no one is knocked. Uh, this is a good. This is a good nugget actually no one has actually knocked out Stephen Thompson in the first round so maybe we should just play it that way so let's see Rachmanov fight lines actually round props I guess Rachmanov round one plus 200 that's good enough for me let him just run after him put him up against the cage trip him take him down and submit him got five minutes to win probably a stupid idea because it's a big cage and and from what I've heard, Stephen Thompson is just going to use the big cage and run around for a while. And if anything, Rachmanov is going to get there in the second or third. So maybe this first line value, first round line value is a little bit wide. So we'll play this one. Shock Rachmanov round one plus one eight, uh, plus 200 for one. Eight. Is that it? No, we got a couple more. All right. Now we're at the, the, the meat and potatoes, right? We have the two five round fights here. We have Pantoja against Roy Val. Uh, I think most people are on the Pantoja side. So I, I do think that Roy Val is the side. Um, it's a question of how I want to play this. I, mean, I, could, I could just play the money line here, or I could try to just play him in some other way. And the thing is, is that I think people are playing some Roy Val inside the distance here because he does bring a really, you know, he brings a lot of heat and he does have a lot of finishes. Um, and I think that the idea is that Pantoja is more likely to, you know, to get the decision. So if we play Roy Val by decision, I mean, that would be pretty insane. Um, let's take a look and see some of this. Roy Val by decision is plus 1,000. I mean, is he really going to last five rounds, though? I think we're probably just supposed to play him plus the 160. Because um, I think there's just too many. It's going to be it's going to be too active. There's going to be too many opportunities to get that finish. So I'm just going to play him plus the 160. And finally, we have the main event. Now, before we get to it, we have to re you know, recap the terrible plays we've made already. Uh, Gazia, terrible cardio. Why should he win by decision? Who knows? But we'll find out. Plus 550. Lucas Almeida, I mean, the industry should tell you something. 50 people that know what they're talking about, they all pick Feely. He's probably going to win, right? Well, we'll see. Uh, Cody Durden, if he wins, it's supposed to be just by control or whatever it is. So playing him inside the distance is probably foolhardy. So plus 550, we'll see. Uh, Casey O'Neill going to get those takedowns. Um, so I guess that's going to be her path to victory. To play Lipsky by submission seems kind of ridiculous. So eh, she's going to submission one out of 14 times. We're going to see. Uh, Cody Garbrandt, very low volume decision in his last fight. Pretty, pretty terrible. Why are we playing him to finish anybody? Beats me, but plus 165. Aldana, I mean, if she wins at all, which she shouldn't because Rosa is obviously the big popular underdog. If Aldana wins at all, she's probably just going to clip her. It's not going to win a decision. So plus 120 is probably down the garbage. Menafield by decision. What kind of – someone steal my mouse to make this play? 
I mean, obviously, if Menafield wins, it's going to be by catching him early or something like that. I mean, what's Jacoby's way too technical. This is ridiculous. That's just money thrown away. Bryce Mitchell, again, you know, uh, if there's any finishing upside, it's Josh Emmett catching him by, by KO. Mitchell's probably just going to hold him down. To expect him to submit him is kind of ridiculous, especially uh, or by KO. So him inside the distance, plus 275 into the trash can. Patty Pimblett, you know, everybody's pretty sure that either they're either going to play the name value Ferguson or Pimblett's going to get him out of there pretty early, you know, with submissions or anything like that. So playing him by submit by decision, probably terrible. Uh, Rachmanov, Rachmaninoff, and we're going to actually, Rachmaninoff, Rachmanov, we're going to have to chase really fast, Stephen Thompson around for a full round and somehow find him and finish him. Beats me, but plus 200. Brandon Voyval, this is kind of a whip play, plus the 160. I really should play him by decision, but we're going to play him plus the 160. So we have 11 fights that we're all going to lose. So we have to fit, pick something in the last fight to make this, uh, you know, to get 12 to 1. And I think I pretty much know what I want to do, at least conceptually. So Colby Covington is going to be bringing the pace, you know, and, and Leon Edwards is going to be, you know, a nice patient point fighter as usual. You know, and, and if they both have very clear paths to victory, like Kobe Covington, a lot of takedowns, grinding him, winning that decision, maybe getting uh, the, maybe a finish late, whatever. Um, or Leon Edwards, uh, again, he, he did get a late finish against Uzman, so that's not off the table, but it's basically going to be, you know, a, a, a an Edwards, uh, an Edwards decision. So essentially, anything by decision is just totally off the table. We're going to have to play one of these cats to get there really early to get 11 to 1. So let's just take a look uh, at some of these odds. And I, there's a couple of things I'm thinking about doing, and I really hope I don't do it. Let's just see. Well, let's just see, first of all. So if we pick any round for Leon Edwards to knock him out, except for the first one, you know, we're going to be getting our 12 to 1. So it would be Leon Edwards in round two by KO. That's certainly reasonable. Let's see Colby Covington. I mean, boy, oh boy, huh? W what if? You know what I mean? Like, oh, that's my KO. Shoot. I thought that was my submission. But look at this. Colby Covington by submission, round one plus four. 4,500. What are, what are these odds here? Hold on a minute here. Wait a minute. You get Colby Covington by submission plus 14 to 1? Please. Give me a break. Easy game. All right. So uh, that will do it. Um, uh, if all these guys lose, I mean, I don't know. This almost seems too easy. Isn't Colby Covington supposed to be going for all these takedowns? And if he gets them, you know, maybe one time Leon Edwards tries to get up and Colby Covington gets submission. I mean, is he does he have no submissions on his record? Am I am I missing something here? I'm, I'm going to look. I want to make sure that at least he has some submissions on his record. Uh, that's going to be my. How does he not have any? Let's see, well, he hasn't won in a while. TKO, decision, 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 decision. I guess he, there it is. Submission, back in 2016. Submission, rear naked choke. Submission, submission. Let's go. Seriously. So that'll do it. Uh, once we uh, log off, I'll put these bets in. I can't do it with Zoom running because it yells at me. Actually, you don't want to try it? Let's try it. Ready? Yeah, check in the All right, so I'm going to close this down. Uh, please watch for tomorrow or later tonight. We're going to do a DFS a lineup build show, which is going to be completely different than the picks video, as you know. And uh, that will do it. Good luck, everybody.